Hey everyone, this is Wobbly Wallaby. Today I'll be discussing what tier I think Kalitz Burke is for PvE. I covered all her skills in a previous video and I'll put a link in the description. Now I'll be trying out her in various PvE instances and letting you know my thoughts on her. First, she reminds me of Rathcracy since both were broken on release and I wasn't sure if they'd get nerfed just before they were released to everyone else. Her damage is really crazy strong, although she lacks survivability when compared to Rathcracy. Here she takes down the dragon without much effort. For these tests, I'm using an account with 70% deposit. I am also using her with the 7-7 core hero passive level. For skills, the buffs I cast right away are Glory Knight, which gives an insane elemental damage reduction. This is great for you and your party, especially in White Star Airship. Next is Thelma and Louise, which gives 30% penetration and skill damage, which is great. You can also cause a target to bleed, which is great for both PvE and PvP. Next, the skill that I spam very often is Memory of Fallen Flower. This is in my auto attack slot and has great range and damage per second. Doing damage over time is better than hitting hard and slowly, especially against Legend Isles and Museum bosses that have shields to prevent one-shotting. Next is Flower of Hope, which is her burst skill that scales based on Agi. She also automatically picks up petals that give great burst damage as well. Next for her core hero passive, when you have level 4, then picking up petals will cause Memories of Falling Flower to be cast for more burst. So generating more rose petals and picking them up manually, or using Flower of Hope for auto pickup is great. Her core hero passive level 7 is a nice to have, I don't think for PvE there's anything game breaking here. Next for these tests, this is my core gear. It's similar to any melee character that has skill damage as well. Her damage modifiers are simple, so gearing her up is also simple. The opposite end would be a class like Ancient Artifact user where you have to balance magic and physical damage. Next here is her Shadow Equipment, Oracle Mirror, and Relic. Next for attributes, I have the max Agi, then Strength, and then the remaining into Vit. I have more than 500 hits, so I don't invest in Dex. Next for stats, I have 31,000 attack, 123.3% penetration, 96.2% skill damage, 179.8% physical damage, 90.4% physical damage increase, and 274.7% ignore defense. I personally think she is buggy here. On both her beta accounts, her ignore defense seems a bit too high based on what she's currently wearing. She should be closer to 200%. Also, her skill damage also seems suspiciously high, but anyways, if they keep that in, then good for free-to-play players. Against the golem, she straight up murders him without trying. When trying out other classes, I often have to use the water damage accessories and do some strategy, but she's powerful enough on her own to just do it on auto. Now, is this design a bad thing? Well, I think for free-to-play or semi-free-to-play players, this is excellent. It is like Rathcracy where people can play her without spending any BCC and she's crazy strong. I honestly would choose a class like this over some mediocre PvE class like Fenrir, which has zero hype. Against the floor 3 captain, she does good as well. She's able to avoid getting one shot at the beginning by bursting him down. Against the mobs, her AoE is incredible as well, she's able to wipe them out quickly. I do think that her Flower of Hope cast time can feel a bit slow at times, and sometimes you want to cast this way faster, but if this was much faster, it would be a bit too busted. Next, I showed the Museum Dragon kill at the introduction, so I'll skip to floor 2. This floor gave me a bit more trouble. This is where I had to manually cast Flower of Hope to ensure it always landed on the Rook. It cannot be on cooldown otherwise you will die. The Rook comes out and I have to burst it down immediately.
Now after the rook goes down, in preparation for the second rook, I take it a bit slower to ensure my flower of hope will be ready and I'm not on anti-death food cooldown. The second rook kill was close, I was thinking I was dead, but luckily I was able to burst it down. Then I continued killing the boss. He eventually goes down and that was the hardest one I had faced, from both Isles and Museum. Are you playing 8K games and want to run your game 24-7 without affecting your phone or computer's performance? Try UG Phone, a 24-7 cloud emulator with ultra low latency. Here I'm playing Genshin Impact without needing to install more than 17 gigabytes on my phone. Then I click on my device's menu to bring up a variety of options and switch to my other device. Here's my Ragnarok mobile device, where I park my character in Void and other MVP spawning places and idle here all day. There are multiple servers in Asia and one for America. There are many plans available, so check them out. If you do sign up, then use the invitation code WOBBLY to immediately get a bonus of 488 diamonds. Here I use the code, then I can use diamonds to try it out for 4 hours for free. Diamonds can also be used to get discounts on paid plans like $1 off the 7 day plan. I'll put a link in the description, thanks to Yuchi Phone for sponsoring this video. Next for Oracle, she does well because she has AoE and Burst. I used to use Saitama in Oracle, and his Burst was great but he had no AoE options, which was super frustrating. Next for Weister Airship, her survivability isn't great, but I think she gives great team buffs, so she is actually worthy of taking a slot. Her damage is also not that bad either. Next for survivability, you can use the Cobalt Leader card as a cheap life gain source. When she does Flower of Hope, which is single target, you can gain back HP as you see against this dummy. Also, if you're really good at timing stuff, you can use Flower of Hope to dodge AoE. For example, against the PSR Dragon, I timed the hit so that I completely dodged the full screen AoE. She seems to have some invincibility frames just before she does Flower of Hope. It's a neat trick, but somewhat hard to time. Overall I'd say she's S tier. She's incredibly powerful and has great single target and AoE options. She's capable of soloing Legend Isles 1-3 and Museum 1-2 at 70% depot. She also has great team buffs making her worthy of being in a party. Her biggest problem is her lack of survivability when compared to Rathcracy, who has built in lifesteal and HP shields with her wings. But beyond that, there's a good chance she'll be nerfed before she's released globally. I think she's a bit too powerful, and unless the devs are being very generous to free-to-play players or semi-free-to-play players, I think they might tone it down slightly. I think they might scale down the edgy damage for Flower of Hope, or lower the range or damage of Memories of Fallen Flower. But who knows, only time will tell. What do you think of Klitzberg? Let me know in the comment section. If you enjoyed this video please like, comment and subscribe. Here's a video that I'd recommend, and if you want more sneak peeks, check out this playlist over here.